Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you are watching Laws in the Making on Rajasabha TV. Today we are discussing the Allied and Healthcare Professionals Bill 2018. Allied and healthcare professionals include individuals like physiotherapists, surgical and anesthesia related technology professionals who are part of the current healthcare system. However, this strata remains unregulated and underutilized. The bill seeks to regulate and standardize the education and practice of these professionals. To discuss the bill, I have on the show with me Dr. Girish Tyagi, Registrar of Delhi Medical Council, and Ms. Kavita Narayan, Public Health Expert at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Regulating and establishing a standard of training for allied and healthcare professionals can reduce the cost of medical care and improve access to quality healthcare services. The purpose of this bill is to improve the access to quality driven services by establishing a regulatory framework that sets standards for education and practice of allied and healthcare professionals. Allied and healthcare professionals have been part of Indian healthcare system. They provide services that deal with direct patient care, such as physiotherapists or services that support the diagnosis and treatment of any illness, disease or injury, such as lab technicians. Currently, there is no mechanism that regulates the functioning of these professionals. We provide mainly two roles in a preventive treatment form and also preventive education. According to the WHO, the Asian country, mainly India, will going to affect mainly posture related problems like spinal problems and various joint diseases. And these are the problems which is due to musculoskeletal problems. And in this, our professionals are very expert as compared to other professionals because the physio's syllabus are mainly focused on musculoskeletal system. And according to the medical evidences, it is shown and proved that musculoskeletal system operates and also stimulates various system. The bill includes a schedule which lists certain services as allied and healthcare professions. They include life sciences, surgical and anesthesia related technology professionals, trauma and burn care professionals, physiotherapists and nutrition scientist professionals. Nutritionist बनने के लिए सबसे पहले ये जरूरी है कि plus two में आपके पास science with bio biology as a subject होना जरूरी है। उसके बाद universities में आपको जो course opt करना है that is graduation B.Sc in home science। उसके बाद आगे बढ़ने के लिए हर university का अपना अपना अलग selection procedure होता है। B.Sc home science में आगे आप specialization करते हैं foods and nutrition में। उसके लिए आप मास्टर्स भी कर सकते हैं ग्रेजुएशन के बाद और एक डिप्लोमा कोर्स भी यूनिवर्सिटी के थ्रू दिया जाता है। This is the right channel to opt for a dietitian. The bill goes on to further categorize allied health professionals and healthcare professionals. An allied health professional is someone trained to support the implementation of any healthcare treatment recommended by a doctor. The professional should obtain a diploma or a degree with an experience of at least 2,000 hours. A healthcare professional is someone who provides preventive, curative, rehabilitative, therapeutic or professional health services. The professional should have obtained a degree with an experience of at least 3,600 hours. The Allied and Healthcare Professions Bill 2018 was introduced in the Rajya Sabha by the Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Sri Jagat Prakash Nadda on December 31, 2018. The bill has been referred to a standing committee for further recommendations. Dr. Tyagi, let me begin the program with you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about who are these allied professionals and you know who are these healthcare professionals that the bill is talking about? The bill is talking about uh, like uh, physiotherapist, OT technicians, audiometrist, and uh, lab technicians. These are okay. the mainly. So these are a lot of the people that when we go to a hospital, you know, we see on the sidelines in addition to the doctors and nurses. Kavita, you want to tell me a little bit more about, you know, what is the granularity? Because I think the bill has a schedule at the end which sure. lists down a number of these things. Sure. So what we've, uh, you know, what we've tried to essentially do uh, as part of this bill is really make this very understandable. Because, you know, we, uh, as I think we sort of discussed earlier, the understanding of who these allied and healthcare professionals are really is one that we are just about sort of gaining understanding on in this in this country, as as I'm sure we've spoken about. So, um, you know, when we say the word allied, 
uh, we've technically, historically, we've always said paramedics. You know, we've used the word paramedics to sort of look at anybody who's not a doctor, who's not a nurse, and we've said they are paramedics. Now, the word paramedic is a major misnomer because paramedics are those that actually operate ambulances. They are those that in the US, for example, we call, you know, these when we say, when you call 911, the guys that come in and rush in are paramedics. So that's only covers sort of one aspect of this entire spectrum of people that come under the allied and healthcare professionals ambit. Um, this bill basically attempts to really classify them on an international code. So there is the international standards of classification of occupation that the WHO uh, refers to. It's also sort of, you know, it's the, the ILO, the International Labour Organization also refers to it. So we have tried to use those codes so that it is standard not just for India, not just for today, but we are also sort of globally equivalent. So we've really tried to give the codes. You've actually, you will see in the bill, there is a numerical schedule that sort of matches Correct. every single, you know, profession. So we've said all of these people, are, are understood as allied and healthcare professionals globally and that's where really it's India's time to also now sort of move on and that's how this this schedule was um, sort of thought through. Thought through. Okay. I'm so sorry. Sure. Dr. Tyagi, I just wanted to ask you, you know, earlier on the program, you know, we said that uh, there's a schedule at the end of the law. It puts together 15 broad categories and 53, you know, uh, professionals underneath that. What is the requirement? How do you, you know, uh, is there an educational requirement? Is there an amount of course that you complete? So what does is, what is the bill talk about that? Basically, the requirement is that it is a, till now it is a, it is a unregulated sector. Okay. That's because uh, we know, don't know the, about the qualifications or the competence of the person, whether uh, doing a service at the government sector or the private sector, because there is a need of that, uh, all the sectors, like lab technicians or uh, OT technicians or uh, X-ray technicians. So when you say unregulated, what does that mean? Unregulated because the, there was no controlling authority. Because uh, at at Delhi, so I am talking of Delhi, there uh, you you go across any government hospital, say AIMS or something. There is a museum of labs. There are collection centers, and nobody is uh, nobody knows about the who is collecting the center, what is the how the lab that collected center is uh, being controlled, or how does this. Uh, Okay, okay. So, what you're saying is that there's no minimum standard which is there, which will say as to whether a technician is operating an X-ray machine is qualified to operate it. So, he might have studied somewhere and somebody else in another yeah, hospital they, might they, have studied somewhere. They, he might be only 8th eighth, class eighth or okay. something, or just a, just a assistant to a lab, lab, then he claim himself to be a, to be a lab, lab. lab technician. Okay. So, 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 so so clearly there was a need for some kind of a regulation. Uh, you want to elaborate on as to why is the law needed now for this? Sure. Uh, you know, so it'll be, it's interesting when you look at the history of how this developed. In 1953, 54, etc., you know, we had, we had uh, a very, very famous, we had some reports called the Mudalya report. We had the Bohr Committee report. These are all reports that are now more than, you know, 50, 60 years old. Even in those reports, there was a need mentioned that in addition to sort of the nursing council, the medical council, the pharmacy council, etc., which were all established very close to independence, there was a need expressed to say that allied healthcare professionals must be also regulated. There must be a set of st structure and standards that are put in place. However, it's very interesting that we've taken a long time in, in that sort of coming up, partly also because the reason we've sort of, you know, they have, they have been sort of... Um, we, we've understood the doctors, we've understood nurses, we've understood, you know, um, pharmacists to an extent. But beyond that, uh, and dentists, of course, because dentists also come, you know, sort of close in line along with the doctors. But this whole other group has been sort of a very, um, sort of a mixed bag and there's not been enough understanding. Now, there was the Rehabilitation Council of India, the RCI, that was established a few years later, obviously. And in, um, in the 90s, there was... Um, uh, people such as the prosthetics and orthotics. Now, these are people that are actually making implants for your knees, for example. Now, that group fits under there. The speech and um, the speech therapists and audiologists, you know, these are people that are again looking at your speech and your hearing. These folks also fall under the Rehabilitation Council of India. The physiotherapists and occupational therapists at one point belonged to the Rehabilitation Council of India, but then later on they chose to come out of it. And now they are basically, a, they are a prominent part of this bill, but they chose to come out of that because they felt that their uh, treatment and and their scope of practice etc was a lot more uh, than sort of what the you know the RCI spoke about because the RCI was you know very was concerned with disabilities mostly it sits currently under the Ministry of Social Justice today whereas this bill sort of expands the whole continuum of care that they can provide we call it therapeutic we call it diagnostic we call it uh, you know rehabilitative curative so there is a whole range and so that's how um, you know so, the, so there was an understanding and we had to wait for the evolution of today from you know those years 
because of the large number of professional groups that have also emerged today and therefore there is really a need for us to sort of ensure that there are standards. Okay. Dr. Tyagi, very briefly, so you are a member of a you know, current council which regulates a certain part of the healthcare sector. So what is the need for having a regulatory body? You know, what does a regulatory body do in the entire healthcare space? Because we have come across uh, many complaints against the labs and because uh, the nursing homes or the hospitals are covered, being covered by the Nursing Home Act okay. or, the, or uh, in different state by the Clinical Establishment Act. Since the, and thirdly, the Clinical Establishment Act is not applicable, it is the, the nursing home and hospital are covered by the Nursing Home Act. And since the labs, they are not covered by the nursing they are not being registered by the nursing homes, nursing home act. So what you're saying is that there is a gap. Yeah, there, there is, is an gap. institution that is covered, and there are people yeah, we, within we, we, the institution yeah, we who are not covered. Number of complaints against the lab, and uh, we have sent uh, no, letters to the Delhi government to take action against those labs which are not functioning properly. Okay. The, the pathologist is not being employed. The is not being employed. They are uh, pathologists are lending their signatures, or technicians are not qualified. But uh, st till now. Okay, so what this bill is going to do is it's going to one standardize some of these things and yes, it's going to fill a gap or in an unregulated area in the healthcare space. Area. Okay, it's time for us to head into a break. Uh, when we come back, we will discuss the provisions of the uh, provisions of the details of the different institutional authorities that are being established under the bill. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the Allied and Healthcare Professions Bill of 2018. The bill seeks to regulate and standardize the education and practice of allied and healthcare professionals. It sets up a regulatory mechanism at the center and state level to establish certain standards of education and practice for these professionals. The bill sets up the Allied and Healthcare Council of India consisting of 48 members. The role of this council is to frame regulatory policies that will impact the education and practices of allied and healthcare professionals. The council will also provide for a uniform entrance and exit exams for the allied and healthcare professionals. In the current state of healthcare system, many allied and healthcare professionals remain unidentified, unregulated and underutilized. India's health system is highly focused on efforts towards strengthening limited categories of professionals such as doctors, nurses and frontline workers. So recently in 2018, Union Cabinet has approved the Allied and Healthcare Professional Bill that aims to regulate and standardize the education and services by allied healthcare professionals. The bill provides for structure, constitution, composition and functions of central council and state councils, for example, framing policies and standards and also providing provision for a common entry and exit examination. Also offenses and penalties clause, it has also been added to check for malpractice. So I think it will take some time but looks like a right direction to, st to strengthen the foundations. Under the provisions of the bill, state governments will be required to set up state allied and healthcare councils. These councils will consist of 29 members each. The councils will be required to ensure that allied and healthcare professionals follow the laid code of ethics. They will also register and inspect allied and healthcare institutions. The councils will be responsible for the conduct of uniform entrance and exit examinations. For good governance, we allied profession require a equal contribution which is missing in this bill let's say for physio department uh, in allied healthcare there are very limited points in favor for physios which will bring harmony in working of allied professional bill uh, in current bill the physios are mainly governed by bureaucrats and there are very less physios so it will give a resistance in motto of working of allied health system so, uh, it's important that uh, physio should be increased so that uh, it give a proper working of a allied healthcare system. All allied and healthcare institutions are regulated by the Allied and Healthcare Council of India. Any changes made to the structure or capacity of the institution must have prior permission from the council. Institutions that do not conform to the standards of the councils may lose the recognition granted to them. 
Kavita, let me get to the meat of the bill. Uh, so clearly, uh, health is a state subject. So Parliament is now enacting a law which is going to set up a regulatory environment. So can you walk us through as to what are the different tiers of regulation that Parliament is setting up through this bill? Sure. So I think um, um, somebody articulated here fairly nicely. Uh, you know, if you look at regulation, and I think we've, we've uh, said this a few times before, you really want to look at the standard of practice and you also want to look at the standard of education. So what is being taught, what is being, um, you know, in, in terms of the institutions that are there, and what is the kind of practice that we are allowing these professionals to do? Those are really the two major aspects that, you know, any, any if you look at any regulator, that's what we're looking at. But here in the structure of the bill, we've looked at a central council, a central mechanism, where which consists of um, obviously a, you know major ministries that are represented that all have um, a, 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 a say here, but also has enough representation from all of the major categories. So all the 15 categories that we are talking about, there is representatives from there on this bill. And the way we try to sort of enforce the standards is by having individual professional advisory bodies for each of those groups. And then people are represented from the advisory body onto the council so that the individual concerns of concerns, standards, etc. for each of the professions are directly brought on board by that particular group. So that's one of the, the primary structures if you look at sort of how the structure is looked at. We have doctors on this bill. We have, uh, you know, charitable institutions that are doing good work that are also represented as, as, the, as, a, uh, as a constituent. The multi-stakeholder um, nature of this bill is very different from what you would see, let's say, in a, you know, the medical council, nursing council, etc. Because we've realized that this healthcare today is much more of a multidisciplinary um, subject than it ever was before. It is not only the doctor's domain, it's not the nurse's domain. It really involves a whole group of people coming together. And so you will see that reflected in the, A, in the structure of sort of the, the composition of how this council works. Now, as it's your very, very important point of how the states are sort of linked in here, the central council is sort of framing the policies, so sort of ensuring that the, the actual law is made, is that the regulation is actually created and the standards are set in place. But the work of implementation is done by the state council. So we have a very similar structure which and the details of all of which are available without going into too much of the nitty gritties, the state council in every state literally replicates that structure from the center, but it is done at the state level. And the state then has full autonomy to go in and inspect, for example, the colleges, accredit, you know, inspect the colleges, provide them the licenses, colleges or institutes that are running these degrees. Who gets a license? Who gets, you know, who is eligible for practice or not? Or, uh, who Whose license may be withdrawn because you have not sort of kept up with the necessary educational qualifications. All of these are implemented at the state level and through a central register, which we think is a repository of all the information, the state and the central registers communicate so that the information at all points is, is communicated. So that's in in essence the structure okay so the idea of the bill is that the center sets the broad policy which is yes. uniform across the country yes and the state councils then go ahead and you know implement and inspect as to what's happening on the ground absolutely okay dr tyagi you're on a council you know you've seen the membership of you know what the councils at the state and the central level have do you have uh, what are yeah, your one take thing on is that, that uh, in the composition of the state council there is a representation from the Medical Council of India, Nursing Council of India, and uh, Rehabilitation Council of India. Since it, there is no, uh, in the state medical in the state uh, this uh, council, they should be representative of the state medical council, okay, or state nursing council, not the medical council of India or the nursing council of India, because they are being represented at the central level also. Okay. They, they they should not be any replication of that. Uh, there should be only the representation of the state council, state nursing council, state the medical council or state uh, pharmacy council, but not that. So duplicate representation is what you're saying is should not happen yeah, yeah. between since, the center and the state the, councils. Since it is the state council which will be looking after the recognition part of the, that, that means the other members of that, only the state medical council or the state dental council, uh, not the dental council, the state nursing council nursing or state council. Okay. And one more issue I want to highlight. Since we are designating them as professionals, they should not claim themselves to doctors, first of all. Because we have seen that OT technician working at a AIMS or the Southern Hospital, then going to the, his home at the periphery at the village, is practicing. Since there are nutritionists, physiotherapists and OT technicians also, so we have to see to it that they don't claim themselves to be doctor. It, so, it should be, it should be. Yeah. So what you're saying that. is there should not be misrepresentation of what an individual is and what he or she can do. Yeah. Uh, but I think the law provides for some bit yes. of that. There is an offense which says that if you misrepresent yourself as, uh, you know, an allied professional, there's I think a penalty of 50,000 rupees and there's some uh, jail time also. No, no, we have seen the rampant of the quackery. Okay. Quackery is rampant and uh, all over uh, India, including Delhi. And uh, there are no, not enough laws and uh, we have seen that uh, nobody checks, checks them. 
Okay, Kavita, you want to respond to that? Yeah, uh, I think I think it's a you know valid point that Dr. Yagi makes. But I think uh, you know this is going to be an issue no matter. We see this in every regulator. You know, even those that have been there, you are always going to have. You know, I think ultimately we make laws so that the honest are kept honest. You know, and then there are going to be cases where we will have to impose penalties, where we will have to ensure. But the point of bringing in the law is basically to say that no more can you be allowed to just practice unchecked. Whereas so far, you know, you can go in and get an MRI, you can get an X-ray. Somebody is doing your lab. You have no way to verify what the standard, what is this person studied, what is his or her qualification, how many years of practice, the people who are coming to your house to take your blood draw, you know, for a regular, how many, who has verified, who has checked, you know, the, the number of years of, you know, sort of what is the, the training that has happened. So there is, a, if you think about it, there is a whole group of people touching you when you go for care to a hospital or to a clinic or to a physician's facility. The doctor may be licensed, you know, the nurse may, may be okay, but a whole host of those folks, we have no idea. So it's very important to set those standards. Obviously, it is up to the, you know, what, uh, you know, the, the regulator does to ensure that we keep that's that's the in fact that's the very point so we will have we will continue to have quacks we will continue to have people that are there but that's the whole point is to you know and the regulator will step in as and when required and ensure that these things don't yes. happen dr Thakki, one of the things that we always look at in this program is what is going to the impact or why is this bill important uh, to our viewers who are watching this program so why do you think is this bill is important for patients who go to a hospital Be because that as i already said that is a Till now, it is an unregulated sector. Okay. And by by bringing this uh, act or the bill, it will become a regulated sector. And of course, ultimately, we are working for the benefit of the society. And the society at large will be benefited. And one more thing I just want to add on that. In, in this uh, composition, at the state or the central act, there is a no representation of the private sector. Because in the institution, uh, government alone cannot provide the institutions or the private sector has to be involved. So in the composition of the central as well as the state, private sector should be the given a chance to represent Reason. or make, make it available. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, Kavita, what is the impact? Why is it important? Why is this bill important for hospitals? And why is this important for people who are studying uh, to become allied professionals or healthcare professionals? I think there are two uh, very important um, aspects here. One is obviously the safety and quality aspect. Anybody that gets in, you know, if I'm a patient, if there's anybody who is touching me in any form or fashion, whether taking my blood, whether, you know, even assisting me in a, you know, when I am, when maybe my parents or assisting me when I'm not well, moving me, if, if there is patient contact and if there is patient care, I think in every civilized nation in the world, there is some process to ensure that these folks have, there is a, there is a check in terms of what's happening. So that's A, that's critical, that's important. But the, the bigger part, I think, in terms of, in addition to setting standards, is that this allows for people to aspire for a career in healthcare, which today, until, until now, we have always thought, you know, you can be a doctor, or then, you know, for all the smart kids, you just say, oh, all I can be is a doctor. Doctor nahi mila, because it's tough. You know, we have 10 lakh children who write the NEET exam, and 50,000, you know, people maybe get in there. But this really says, not everybody has to be a doctor, but there are some extremely lucrative as well as satisfying professionally extremely enriching professions where you contribute to the society in a very meaningful way such as being a physiotherapist being an occupational therapist an optometrist a lab technologist you know a, a mental health professional for example a behavioral health a counselor or you know uh, folks like that there are a whole plethora of professions that we've never looked at and that there i think is really the opportunity for us to open up healthcare as a sector for both the public and the private i think for us to get to aishman bharat we are going to need these professionals in across the system in the public and the private private space most importantly, in 2030, it is predicted that the world globally is going to have uh, about an 18 million work, health workforce shortage, is what the WHO has come out with in a major report. That's a report that's been debated, you know, a lot. Even assume there is a small percentage of that that we can actually contribute to. I think Indian students and Indian youth will really qualify if there is a, a, a proper and a regulated system in place in order to get those jobs. Great. Thank you, Kavita. Uh, clearly an important bill that will not only set up, you know, standardized processes across the country for allied and healthcare professionals, but also set up, you know, a system where people can, you know, go to uh, accredited institutions and study professionally as to what they can become in these fields. I wanted to thank you both for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new, new episode. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.